you remember the game Memory from when you were a kid? This is very similar to that. So we're gonna try to find matching squares. So we're just gonna start turning things over and seeing what matches. Okay, I have seen that. I think that was here. Yes. Woo. Hey, we're almost there. And then this one's here. And we have solved the puzzle. The philosopher Kant called music a quickening art because it can bring things to life. It can make a memory. It can change your mood. It has more power to stimulate the brain than anything else. Music and memory are intertwined for me, like DNA. Have you ever had a song transport you to a specific time and place? Like something picked you up and took you somewhere else. I met with Dr. Yuande Pierce to find out. Hello, Yuande, how are you? I'm doing very well. Today we're gonna be exploring how music can actually help us to improve our memory. So we're gonna do a demonstration. And in this demonstration, we wanna see what the impact of music is on your memory recall. Okay. I'm going to tell you two stories. The first story I'm going to read to you, and then the second story I'm actually going to attempt to sing. All right, the first story, John. Susan's son Gary went to band practice every Friday at two. He liked going to the field behind his school and playing the drums. One day, he hit the drum so heavily that it broke open in front of five older students practicing football. The band teacher overheard loud laughing, came over and gave him a new drum. So John, tell me the story back again. Okay. So Susan has a son named Gary that uh, was going to band practice at two o'clock. And um, he was practicing in a field that was near uh, where the football players played. And uh, he banged on the drum so hard that he broke the drum and eh, uh, that was impressive. I'm okay. actually very impressed. Okay, let's do the second story now. Okay. So this is me um, telling you a, a different story, but this time I'm going to songify the story. Steve's daughter Lauren played tennis every Wednesday at four. She enjoyed going to the courts next to her house and meeting her friends. One day she smacked the ball so hard that it went over the park fence where two small beagles resided. The beagle's owner heard intense howling, showed up, lent a hand, and threw her back the ball. Okay, John, what was the story? Okay, so now we have different names. Steve, who has a daughter, and I forget her name, and she likes to go play tennis at four o'clock on a certain day of the week, which I forget. And then she was hitting the balls. It went over the um, fence to the neighbor's dog, and the dog, the beagle, was howling. And uh, yeah, the neighbor was not happy about that. So John, I recorded you recalling both stories. I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna score them, and then we'll see how you did on both of those. The science here may literally take your breath away. Let's meet a very special group who use the power of music to unlock memories that could never be forgotten. I'm Karen Skipper. I'm a board certified music therapist. And I've been directing the OK Corral, a therapeutic singing group for people with um, Alzheimer's and other dementias for about two years now. The pathology of Alzheimer's is that plaques and tangles are formed in the brain and that interferes with the connections in the brain. Music can actually bypass those plaques and tangles and hit new neural pathways. So it allows for neuroplasticity that, that can improve cognition and memory. We use music to address these problems by using familiar songs, and we do try to use familiar songs, can hit the amygdala, which is the emotion center of the brain. And that actually brings back emotions that are associated with these songs. So it can hit people on the physical level, on the cognitive level, on the social level, and on the emotional level. Music is a wonderful tool. So John, when was the last time that you took a test? Last time I took a test, well, I take COVID tests like every day. <laughs> a test like the one we just did. <laughs> uh, a test like the one I just did, I haven't taken one like that 
that I can remember. I see, because it's a specific kind of memory. It's a yeah. working memory, as you spoke about. Mm -hmm. And this uh, demonstration that we did was about trying to see the impact of music on our working memory. Yes. So before I give you the results, <laughs> how do you feel like you did? Some of the specifics I lost pretty quickly, but I, I kind of got the gist of it. When I looked at your results, you actually scored better when I sung the text and you were able to recall more of the sort of the gist of the story. Okay, good. Which is really interesting. So it shows the value of music. It and, uh, shows the value of music. Helping me uh, use my working memory. Exactly. Yes. There are three main reasons for why when I sung the text, it was easy for you to remember in mm -hmm. terms of working memory. So the first is very simple, it's just rhyme. Mm -hmm. And so when we're in school, we learn the alphabet, we sing. I learned the 50 states in alphabetical order and I still know the song. There you go, this yes. is a perfect example how we can use that as a real life application. Yes. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is because of the idea of a um, monomic anchor. So mm -hmm. it's where you anchor the melody to information. Mm -hmm. So the brain is really sophisticated in processing music memory. So if you tie the two together, it can actually sometimes help to anchor that information. I mean, you have to learn a lot of lyrics. Uh -huh. Do you find that it's easier to sort of say them or do you always sing them? It's easier for me to sing them, to remember them, particularly when I'm covering a song uh, that I didn't write. Um, it's easier if I have the lyric in front of me and I'm listening to the artist sing it. So it helps me think about their phrasing when I'm listening to them, but also the actual lyric when I'm reading it. But that's the second reason. And then the third reason is something called dual coding theory. Basically, when you are listening to someone speak words, um, you're actually just processing it as spoken word. But when you're listening to someone sing words, then you're actually processing it by verbal and melody. So the melody is processed by this subsystem and it gives you additional things to grab onto for your memory. Exactly. Okay. So that was working memory. Uh -huh. And so now I want to think about episodic memory. Do you know much about that? No, I don't. What is that? Episodic memory you're using all the time is like autobiographical memory. So sure. maybe even this conversation you might remember in the future. Mm -hmm. So what's really interesting about music is how music can actually enhance particular experiences without us even thinking about mm. it. The catch is, the more emotional the music, the more effective it is. Okay. So it has like a more powerful anchorage. So John, can you think of a song that you think is particularly emotional or powerful? Well, when I think about emotional music, Nina Simone always comes to mind. Something about her voice. Songs like I Love You Porgy or nice. Nemekita Pa. Those songs make me feel like a well of emotion come up. But mm -hmm. actually, I think those songs that you've chosen mm -hmm. would make someone watching this video also feel yeah, strong emotions. So absolutely. for the audience at home, we can try and get them to do a demonstration, yes, it, which is that they're going to be watching this. But then I'm urging them to play that song in the background. Yes, play Nina Simone. Yeah, play Nina Simone. Always, <laughs> but especially now. <laughs> and then hopefully when they think about this a week or a month or maybe even a year from now, they'll recall this video that they were watching when they hear that song. Absolutely. As we saw with John, when I songified the story that I told him, we can use music to improve our memory recall. But I want to make a distinction here because we can also use music to help improve our episodic memory by using music to make particular moments in our life more memorable. This may be one of my personal favorites, thinking about all the memories that I have surrounding different pieces of music and fully realizing the shared power of them as art and their influence on my mind. Music can enhance our memory, no doubt. Headspace is designed for anything in life where your mind needs a workout, like improving your memory. Download the app and start meditating with Headspace now.